Hi everyone and welcome to this quick walkthrough of building a logic app that can respond to a webhook from an external system and send a response as needed. It's almost like a request response pattern but I'm going to use Twilio in this case and do request response for a text message. Uh, this walkthrough is useful if you want to subscribe to web webhooks from a number of different services like Visual Studio Online and PayPal would follow similar patterns. Uh, it's also useful for understanding how Azure functions can be used and different content types. Uh, so what we want to create is we want to create a messaging app where when I text in my Twilio phone number, it's going to trigger a logic app and that logic app can perform some logic. Maybe it's doing a lookup of an on-premises SQL database. Maybe it's pulling a record from Dynamic CRM Online uh, and then it's going to return back some data to the user. So you see here, I have an open logic app. This is a blank logic app that I've just started. Uh, and the first piece that I need in any logic app is a trigger and then a number of actions. Now Twilio itself actually allows us to subscribe to webhooks. If I come over here to my Twilio account and click on my phone numbers, you'll notice that I'm actually able to configure this phone number here on my account so that whenever I get a new message, it's going to fire a webhook to a URL that I choose. And what that means is that uh, whenever a new text message comes into this phone number, it's going to send that message and that data to the URL that I specify. Now, I mentioned a number of other services support this pattern, uh, PayPal, Stripe, Visual Studio Online, so on, uh, where you can configure similar webhooks uh, to call different endpoints. Now, how do I get this URL here? Um, that's why you need this manual or request trigger. So if I go ahead and add this request trigger into my logic app, this will fire uh, whenever an HTTP request is received. And in this case, the HTTP request is going to be coming from Twilio. Uh, I don't have a JSON schema for this one. Uh, Twilio is actually going to send form encoded data, so there is no JSON schema. So I'm just going to leave that blank for now. All right, let's uh, figure out what the shape is that Twilio is sending us. And we could look at the API documentation, but I'm going to go ahead and just add a, a second step right here to post whatever data Twilio is sending us, the body from Twilio, and let's post that to somewhere that we can observe. Now, I like to use this service called Request Bin. I can create a Request Bin right here, and it's just going to listen for any HTTP requests. Uh, so you'll notice I could come in here. I could say I want to post to that request bin I just created, and I'm just going to post the body that Twilio is sending us. So go ahead and save that logic app, and when I save it, you'll notice that I have that URL generated, and that's the URL I was talking about. Okay, now we just need to take this URL and update Twilio uh, to post to that URL. So let's go ahead and paste that here, save my changes in Twilio. All right, I'm going to go ahead and text this phone number now from my cell phone uh, and we're going to fire this logic app and we'll see how that works. So let's go ahead and close this so we can watch when this happens. So let me text uh, a quick message. So I went ahead and texted and you can see I refreshed and you can see that that's already fired. Now let's jump first here to request bin. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page and you can see here is the request that Twilio is sending me. You see the body down here from request bin. They've sent me this form encoded data that has information on the country, the state, the message ID, the zip code, all this great stuff. Uh, you see here, there's the body of the message, which is hello world. That's what I texted, great message. Uh, and a few other pieces from Twilio. Uh, all right, now if I look at the logic app, you see that that ran as well. And it has the same details that uh, it ran and sent that information to um, request bin. Now, the one thing I'll call out here is that when I look at this content in Logic Apps today, uh, you'll see that I don't actually see the same form data I was looking at at request bin. But what I actually see is this content type and content mask uh, inside of the objects here in the debugger. Now, the reason that this happening is because the content type that Twilio is sending is a currently non-native type. In this case, it's XWWW form URL encoded. 
And what that means is that the logic app engine isn't exactly sure what kind of data this is. It doesn't know if it's a string representation. It doesn't know if it's binary data. It could be an octet stream. It could be a PDF file. It's not really sure. And so to ensure that it preserves all the bytes uh, exactly as it received them, the logic app will actually display this as uh, its base64 encoded binary representation with a little flag knowing what the content type is. Uh, but you'll notice in my definition, I didn't have to know any of that. I just said, hey, use the body. And at runtime, it correctly unwrapped that as well. Uh, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this content type handling, uh, but I will just call out that there's a document here in the uh, Azure documentation page on how different content types are handled. And you can see here for things like octet or www URL form encoded, uh, it goes into detail on how it's representing that data and how you can correctly use it within a logic app. All right, well, this isn't super helpful for us because ideally we wanna know, you know, what is the data that's actually getting texted within my logic app? How do I take this form data that Twilio is sending me and pull out the pieces that I care about? Uh, so for this to work, I'm actually gonna call an Azure function. And I've written a quick Azure function that will parse URL form encoded data and it will convert it into a JSON object. And JSON objects are a lot nicer to work with within a logic app. So let's come here and I'm going to switch to this Azure function that I have created. You'll see I have a function here called URL form parser. And this is the function right here. It's very simple. It's a webhook function, uh, which means it can be integrated natively with logic apps. And what it's doing is that it's actually going to receive a webhook, which with Azure functions comes in the form of data. Uh, and I have some context to send back the response. So I'm just going to take that data, I'm going to parse it using this parse query function I've written. Uh, I'm going to log that I parsed it, uh, and then I'm going to send back a response where it's just getting the new parsed data. Uh, I'll call out here that I'm actually expecting an object in my data, uh, so I want data.form. So if I scroll down here, this is an example of a request that I'm going to send to this function, which says, hey, I have this form, here's the data I'm sending you, which is a form encoded string. And if I run that, you can see it's parsing it and it's converting uh, this URL encoded string to a JSON object. Now I've gone ahead, you don't have to worry necessarily about figuring out how this URL form parser works. I posted it on our GitHub at github.com slash logic apps IO uh, that you're more than welcome to use. Uh, so how's this useful for us? Well, let's come back in here to our logic app. And I'm actually, it's the second step. I no longer need to send this to request bin anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm actually going to add a new action. But in this case, I'm going to call an Azure function. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say, show Azure functions in uh, my region. And you'll see here, it's going to list this container I have that I was just showing you, which is uh, right here. And here I have the URL form parser function that I just wrote. Now it wants to know, okay, you want to call this. Well, what's the object you want to send it? And if you remember, I actually want to send it an object that says form, and I want to pass in that body just like that. So I'm going to send into the Azure function an object that says form, and then it has the form data, which is exactly what our function is looking for. And it's going to parse it and return the object. All right. So let's go ahead and save this. Let me go ahead and right now just send that exact same text again and let's look at what happens here. So hello world. I went ahead and sent that to Twilio which is going to fire off that webhook. We'll go ahead and refresh this as soon as Twilio gets that message and sends it. Okay, awesome. And we see this second message has come through. Let's dive a little bit deeper into this one so we can see what's happening here. So very similar, I got my trigger. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually calling this URL form parser. And you can see on the inputs, I sent form, and I have all this form encoded data. And in the outputs, I have this nice now object that has all of the pieces of that message, but now it's a JSON object. Let's actually go ahead and just copy this as a sample, because we'll probably use this for reference a little bit later on. So here is the message that now I have inside my logic app from the function, which is that same object from Twilio, but everything's been parsed out. Okay, great. So now let's create and finish our logic app by taking whatever was in the body, uh, which in this case is hello world, and let's go ahead and text it back to the user just to show that this is working. 
Now I could at the same time, and I've done things where I call a stored procedure, um, where I, I look up something like an order status based on the phone number. Uh, that works great too. But in this case, just to kind of close the demo up, let's go ahead and add an action and let's add a Twilio action. We're gonna send a message. Uh, and in this case, I have my, my Twilio account. Okay, and once I have that ready, I can select one of my phone numbers from Twilio, which is this one right here. Uh, the two number, who do I wanna send this to? Well, I really wanna send it to whoever sent me the message. So I have this two field here. Uh, so you'll notice I have an action here called URL form parser, and I really wanna send the phone number to whoever that is. Now in this case, when I click here, all, I, all the logic app knows about is the body from functions, but it doesn't actually know the shape of it because I'm not exposing any swagger on this Azure function to help uh, specify specifics. Uh, so the way I'm actually going to do this is I'm going to write a workflow definition function. And you can click this help button to get details uh, in the workflow definition language for what this means. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what the code view references here. And I'm just going to say uh, at body URL form parser. So now I'm parsed into the body response that it's giving me this body and I need the to field, or not the to field, I'm sorry, I need the from field, because I want to know the from phone number. That's right, who sent me the text message. So I want the from field, so I'm going to go ahead and just say, hey, I want the from field. So right here, I've written an expression, which is going to get that from phone number, and in the text, I want to just say, uh, I got your message, and in this case, I'm going to write another function. This time, I'm going to use curly braces, because that's going to interpolate it into my string. I'm going to say at body URL form parser. And in this case, I want whatever they texted me, which is the body is what it's called. So let's say body. OK, so what I'm doing now is I'm getting that Twilio trigger. I'm running it through an Azure function to create a JSON object. Now I'm going to send the from phone number, and I've written a workflow function to parse out from, from that response. I'm going to say, I got your message, and then just echo it back. We'll even add a nice little semicolon here. Let's go ahead and save this now. Uh, and you'll notice when I switch over to code view, I have my action here, the send action. Um, and it has those workflow definition functions that I wrote uh, right here. And actually, when I switch back to the designer now, uh, you'll notice it's actually tokenized them. It recognizes what I'm trying to do here. Uh, so now it represents itself as tokens. All right, let's go ahead and test this out really quickly. Let's text myself that same text message. And I'm going to watch on my phone, and I should get a nice response. And I did already. I got a response from Twilio. I don't know if you heard the message. So let's go ahead and look at this run that just worked, which was I got the text message from Twilio via a manual request trigger. I parsed the data to get this JSON object, and then I sent a message, and it has now switched out the, the fields so that it's saying, uh, I got your message, hello world, from this to that. Uh, so everything worked great, and Twilio sent me back a nice response saying that they got everything that they were expecting. Uh, so that's it. That's a quick walkthrough on how you can do webhook receive, how you can call Azure Functions, uh, how you can parse JSON data within a logic app, as well as just a fun demo of using Twilio request and response so that you could power a little bot up in Azure. Uh, you could have something so it's like, hey, text for a status update on a certain work item or on a task and, and your logic app could go look up the status and text them back and say, yep, here's what the status results were. Uh, so hopefully that's useful. Feel free to send us any questions to logic apps email at microsoft.com or uh, send us a tweet at logic apps IO. Thanks so much.